the dopamine, you asked earlier about the arc of dopamine and how long it lasts. The, the, one of the t key takeaways from that book, uh, Dopamine Nation, that I've incorporated in my own life is that there are certain activities like cold water that create long lasting arcs of dopamine. Those can be very useful for putting us into long lasting motivational states. So um, these are not big peaks and troughs. These are the pain of the cold water followed by this long, long arc of dopamine. Wonderful, it's a kind of an antidepressant, positive motivator, natural stimulus. I always say, if you don't have access to an ice bath, cold showers, yes, will work. If you have a shower that doesn't get cold enough, keep in mind that the original studies showing this dopamine increase had people get into 60 degree water, which is not that cold, 60 degree Fahrenheit, for 45 minutes to an hour. So your water bill might go up, but you could just draw a kind of cool bath and get in that up to the neck. So, cause I realize there are sometimes some cost barriers to people. They, not everyone has an ice bath. No. Dopamine detoxing. Yeah. So dopamine detoxing is something that apparently today my uh, short-term working memory is off. I, I swear I well, can't- Well, mate, get that in you. I can't think of any, I, I'm caffeinated. I can't think of any um, uh, pharmacologic reason for it, but uh, no excuses. Um, so dopamine detox, I would have thought, was not something real. Um, it seemed kind of silly to me, actually. Um, and I'll tell you why it seems silly and why it still seems silly, but why it may have some utility. But then Anna, Dr. Anna Lemke, told me that it actually can be quite useful to take some time and space away from social media, certainly from any addictive drugs, that's the treatment for addiction, and restore those dopamine levels to baseline. Now, the way that dopamine detoxing was initially described in the Bay Area, where it seemed a lot of tech types were talking about it was in terms of I heard something like oh people aren't even looking at other people's faces you know they're really kind of living this like monkish lifestyle and like no food of that they really enjoy no anything that to me seems kind of crazy and kind of extreme I mean I can understand not ingesting a lot of highly palatable foods you know eating some blander foods I can understand not um, certainly not doing any prescription drugs or taking some time off from caffeine caffeine increases dopamine receptors which makes the, caf the dopamine that's available, more powerful at evoking the dopamine response. I can understand avoiding certain substances and behaviors, but the idea that you weren't gonna look people in the eye because it was gonna be too much dopamine, I mean, I guess it depends on who you're looking in the eye and how much their look positively arouses you, but the fact of the matter is that that's not, that's not a very rational way to think about dopamine detox. But staying out of you know, high intensity, um, highly rewarding activities, I think could be useful in terms of reestablishing that dopamine balance. And everything we know from Anna's work is that dopamine, you know, if you drive those dopaminergic states too long, addictive drugs, et cetera, people can do this with sex, food, drugs, gambling, social media, all sorts of things, um, pornography, you know, what ends up happening is the amount of dopamine that's released over time goes down and down and down and down and pretty much is traversing into the territory of pain. And then people, again, are back to this thing where, you know, they're scrolling internet porn eight, nine ten times or hours a day. And then they're wondering, like, why this isn't effective for them anymore, whereas it was before.